Hello everybody and welcome back. Today's video is on the Chevalier Grinder, the FSG A18. In this video we are going to cover the basic startup and run instructions. Let's start with turning the machine on. Okay, so now we want to turn the machine on. If this key is taken out, you can't turn it on. So if there's a lock in here, this is a lockout, you can't turn this on. So this needs to be pushed in and turning it clockwise will turn the machine on. Let's take a look at the machine axis first. When the machine goes in and out away from you, or the table travel moves in and out away from you, that's the Z axis. When the head goes up and down, that's the Y axis. And when the table traverses back and forth, that's the X axis. The most important to note is that the wheel travel into the workpiece and away from the workpiece is the Y axis and not the Z. Machine control panel. We are going to talk about this part of the panel first here. So what I want to do is when I turn my coolant on, I don't want it to come out, so I'm going to make sure that my coolant is in the off position. Okay, now let's talk about this part of the panel. Okay, let's start off with the easy one. What's the big red button? It's the e-stop or emergency stop. Do we see how this here is zero? That's the alarm code saying that my emergency stop is pressed in. So if this guy's flashing zero, you need to release the emergency stop. That'll go back to normal. Then you can hit your cycle start. The six indicator lights at the top left hand corner of the panel are more important than you think. In this video we're only going to talk about four of the six indicator lights. The first light is the power indicator light. It tells you that the machine has power on. The second indicator light tells you that the wheel is on. And this might be hard to hear or hard to see under certain circumstances. Spark out indicator light when lit means that your power down feed cycle has ended and that it started its spark out cycle. When this is not lit, you have not reached your zero and you are still in a downward cutting cycle. Depth cut reminds indicator light. This is the most important button to know what it does. It means you have more than a hundred thou to take off, which if you're not planning on doing that can be a really big deal. Okay, let's take a look over here. What we have here is we have power on. So we know the power's on, we know the wheel's on. Now this button here is when we've reached our stop. Okay? So when we've come to the bottom of our zero that we set on our automatic, this light will come on. This light here tells us that there's more than one circle. So basically we're taking off more than 100 thou. So if we accidentally have this set to two, yeah, we like that to three, which means this guy's gonna cut uh, 200 thou plus whatever else is on the dial and we'll get that in a second. This is a warning light saying, hey, you're cutting more than 100 thou. So this one is one to Watch for and make sure you understand what it is, okay? So we want to set this guy always to one. And as soon as this guy is set to one, then what will happen is this will turn off. As a reminder, we always do our safety inspections before we start up the wheel. So we've done our 60 second on, 60 second off, and inspected the wheel for damage. Turning the spindle on is a two button operation. If you press this button while the spindle is on, it will turn the spindle off. If this button is not lit up, when you hit cycle start, it will not start the spindle. When this light is flashing, if you hit the cycle start button, the spindle will start. If the spindle button is lit, the spindle is on coolant button. It is best practiced to make sure that the valve for the coolant is closed before turning on the coolant system. When the coolant light is not on, the coolant pump is not on, and it is not selected. When the coolant pump is flashing, the coolant pump is not on, but the button is selected and cycle start needs to be pressed. When the coolant light is on, the coolant pump is on. You may need to open the valve to adjust flow. If there is insufficient flow, you probably need to add coolant. Table axis rapid movement. The rapid in out button works differently depending on which mode you're in. If you're in manual, it'll do nothing. But if you're in jog, it will rapid the table in the Z direction either towards the operator or away from the operator depending if you press the in or out button. If you're in the auto mode and you press the button it will change the direction of feed. If you're in the auto mode and you press both buttons you will stop the Z axis movement immediately. This will not affect the X axis movement you need to close the hydraulic valve to stop that. Z axis mode selector has three positions. In the left position, manual movement is selected. Neither auto nor rapid cross-feed movements is possible. Center position. Rapid in and out mode is selected. Rapid cross-feed movement is normally allowed except for when plunge grinding mode is selected at the same time. Right position, auto surface grind is selected. The cross-feed will increment move in 
z-axis at the end of each longitudinal x-axis move crossfeed incremental length adjustment in auto surface grinding cycle it is used to adjust the length of the crossfeed increment z-axis the cycle start push button does a lot of different things here's a list of a few of them cycle start push button when lit auto surface grinding or auto plunge grinding mode is set and cycle start button has been pushed when flashing one auto surface grinding or auto plunge grinding has been selected but not started by the start cycle button two spindle select or dust exhaust select or coolant select has been selected but not yet started by the cycle start button three chuck is on but hydraulic pump motor is not running not lit when auto surface grinding or auto plunge grinding mode is not selected cycle stop button when lit Auto surface grinding or auto plunge cut mode is selected but not yet started by the cycle start button. When not lit, auto surface grinding or auto plunge grinding mode is not selected. Let's take another moment to talk about the cycle stop button. If you're in the middle of a cycle and you're cutting and you hit the cycle stop button, what it'll do is it'll turn the hydraulics off, it'll turn your wheel off, and it'll also turn off your coolant. But you want to turn those off individually. You don't want to just hit them and have them all go off at the same time. We have our machine cycling. Now what happens if I hit the cycle stop button? Everything shuts down. So ideally you don't want to do that. So if I go to hit cycle start, it won't start back up again. The wheel turns on. We have a number nine flashing because our hydraulic valve is still open. So as soon as I close this hydraulic valve, the error code will disappear. Now I can hit cycle start again and the hydraulics will start up the down feed amount display when this number is lit solidly it displays the amount of down feed but when it's flashing it's the alarm code down feed amount set two digit displays the click feed solenoid or bumps okay this is gonna sound a little bit weird this is not the amount that you're actually taking off it depends on what the selection unit right here it can be set to one-tenth or two tenths. This is the head column unit. By moving this up and down, it raises and lowers the head. You can also use this micrometer stop here to adjust it a small amount. Now, when we use something called the bump, this is a one tenth bump. You can pull this out, turn it around to here, and then it's two tenths. So when you want to lower the head down every time you bump it, uh, you press the button once, it'll move two tenths, and when it's in this position here, it'll move the button, it'll move the head down one tenth. In auto plunge grind mode, it sets how many longitudinal left side and reversals between grinding passes. So basically, if this is set to five, that means the table will go back and forth five times, then it'll plunge down, go back and forth five times, and then plunge down again. Spark out time set. Basically, if this is activated, the light on the left, the yellow one, will be on as well. In auto plunge grinding mode, this sets the amount of spark out passes required. Each pass is one left right stroke. In auto surface grind mode, it sets the amount of spark out passes required. Each pass is one from the rear of the machine to the front of the machine. Depth cut max. This dial cannot be set to zero. It needs to be set to zero one or more. When this display is set to zero one, it will cut the remaining amount left on the y-axis hand feed wheel. I want to set this to zero. So I loosen this handle off, move this around, and this guy here is zero. So when we set our depth stop, if I want to move 10 thou, if I want to take 10 thou off because it stops at zero, I have to go backwards to 90. So if I wanted to take 10 thous off, 10 thousandths of an inch off, I would go to 90, set it to 90, and when it reaches zero, it'll stop. Hear that little click? Hear it? Okay, let's take a look over here. What we have here is we have power on. So we know the power's on, we know the wheel's on. Now, this button here is when we've reached our stop, okay? So when we've come to the bottom of our zero that we set, on our automatic, this light will come on. This light here, tells us that there's more than one circle. So basically we're taking off more than a hundred thou. So if we accidentally have this set to two, yeah, we like that to three, which means this guy's gonna cut uh, 
200 thou plus whatever else is on the dial and we'll get to that in a second. This is a warning light saying, hey, you're cutting more than 100 thou. So this one is one to watch for and make sure you understand what it is, okay? So we wanna set this guy always to one. And as soon as this guy is set to one, then what'll happen is this will turn off. This knob is used to adjust the magnetic chuck's holding strength. I believe it's called a potentiometer. If the left position magnetization is selected, the electromagnet will receive the power amount that is controlled by the potentiometer. Okay, another feature that's unique to this machine, if we want to turn our hydraulics on, and this, isn't, this part isn't unique, our magnet has to be on. When our magnet is on, we go to turn our hydraulics on, nothing, okay? So our magnet has to be at 100% before we turn, before we can turn our, our, see how it's flashing now? Before we can turn our hydraulics on. Now our hydraulics are on. If for some reason this knob gets bumped to below, below 100%, our hydraulics shut off and we can't turn it back on. That's an easy fix for us. Turn it back up to 100%. This light's flashing. We can turn our hydraulics back on. When the button is in the middle position, the magnet is off. Keep in mind the part will still be stuck to the magnetic table because you have not demagnetized the table. When the button is in the right position, demagnetization is selected. The chuck and any workpiece on it will be demagnetized. It is possible for you to damage the machine if you turn the demag cycle to magnet during the middle of a cycle. This cycle must run complete until it is finished. The green light will stop flashing and then you can turn the magnet on if you wish. When we turn our magnet on, I want to turn it off, wait a second, and then go to demagnetize. In the demagnetize, it'll take a moment for it to run its full cycle. It might seem like it's taking forever, but you have to wait until the light turns off before you can turn the magnet back on. Rapid up push button. If you want to raise the head positively in the Y axis, Press this button in almost any mode and the head will go up. Rapid down push button. This is basically the same thing, but you have to press both of the buttons at the same time. So regardless of where I am here, I can still raise and lower the head. So to raise the head up, you press the up button. To lower the head, you press both of these buttons down at the same time. If this one's just pressed, nothing happens. It has to be both of these. So if I'm here, still works. Here, still works. Manual step down feed push button. Basically, every time you push this button, the head will drop in Y axis, one tenth or two tenths, depending on what the setting is. So with just the power on, I can use this step control, or even if all the power is on, I can use it as well. So by pressing this button here, you hear this little bump or step. That all depends on which setting we have set here. In this case, oops, that's one thou or one tenth. Pull it out and then this is two tenths. So every time I press the button, that moves that down. Y-axis surface plunge mode selector. If the left position jog is selected, you have the ability to use the rapid up, down, and manually step feed button. If the center position is selected, auto surface grinding down feed is selected. An increment of two thou maximum and a half thou minimum down feed will occur at cross feed intervals. If the right position is selected, auto plunge feed grinding is selected. An increment of two thou maximum to a half thou minimum down feed will occur at longitudinal left reversals. Hand wheel rise up time adjustment, also known as retract. The potentiometer is used to set the time or the distance that the wheel head will rise up after spark out passes are completed. Park side select. If the left position, park at left, is selected, the table will stop at the left hand side after the spark out cycle is completed. It will also do the same for the right side, but it'll stop on the right side. Here are some examples of setups on the controller. Okay, let's take a look at our control panel and see what's happening. 
Okay, so if we take a look here, right here it tells us that the power's on. Well, the machine's moving, so the power is on. If we take a look at this light, this light tells us that the wheel is on. If we take a look at this light here, it tells us that we're taking off more than 100 thou in depth on our plunge. It doesn't say how much, it's just saying more. If we take a look here, the wheel's on. If we come over to here, what we're doing is we're taking two steps down and that depends on what your side wheel is set to. It could be either a hundred thou or two, or sorry, it could either be two tenths or four tenths, depending on what your wheel is set to. We take a look here. This is telling us how much to set this to. So we could increase this, hit our cycle start. Now it's gonna take six steps. When we go over to here, we are in, if we take a look here, we're in plunge mode, so we're only going straight down. If the table's not moving side to side, we're just plunging. Okay? So what we're doing is we're taking, every three passes, we're taking six. So if we go here, we go, wait till it bumps. One, two, three. So every third pass, it's going to plunge down six steps, which could be, in this case, either six tenths or 12 tenths. And we take a look here. This tells us how many rotations of the wheel that we're going down. So this is set to two, so it's a hundred thou plus whatever else is on the wheel. So if we take a look, we come down to the wheel here, and we're at around 94 or 84. So therefore, let's say this was 85, what we'd be taking off is 115 thou. We come over to here, we're in plunge mode. Our retract is in the off, so when we're finished, the head won't pop up. It's going to park to the left. Our magnet is on, and our magnet is on at full strength. Okay, so let's take a look and see what we have here. If we take a look here, our power's on, our wheel's on. What I wanna do is I want this guy to come on to say that we're on our final pass, and I wanna do three spark out passes, and my retract is off now. I'm going to put it my retract on so that the head lifts up off of the workpiece, and I have it parking to the left. This time I'm gonna have it parking to the right. So let's turn our, hydro our, our hydraulic feed on, our cross feed on. We have only a couple thou left to go. So we know right here that we're on our spark out. This is how many spark out passes we have. So as we watch this guy here, I have it set pretty quick. I think this is number two pass. Shuts off, lifts up, and it parked to the right. Remember, this introduction does not replace hands-on training. If you have a question, ask your instructor. Obviously, this training video is not meant for general consumption, but I put it on YouTube so that my students have easy access to this. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. As always, if you got any value out of this, please like and subscribe. All you have to do is click on the icon on my face and I'll do the rest. Thank you and have a good night.